Hello and welcome to another Savantis Fast class. I'm Christian, a senior ERP technical consultant and developer at Savantis. Today we'll discuss power automate approvals, and specifically how we can use the pre-built templates for approvals in Business Central. There are a handful of useful workflows with NBC that can prove useful, and we'll show that functionality briefly today. Um, but Microsoft is really prioritizing and encouraging workflows, workflows through Power Automate instead of in-system flows. And this is simply because Power Automate flows are so incredibly flexible and customizable. Um, Microsoft is also continually expanding its template library. So it's going to become easier and easier to find templates built in for your needs uh, with little or no alterations needed. Uh, so it's a great tool to start utilizing now with BC and other apps like D365, CRM, and SharePoint. And it's only going to get better from here. As we go along, drop any questions that you have in the chat. My colleagues are waiting to answer them for you. Uh, so to begin, we need to set up approvers in Business Central. Any approval workflows in BC or Power Automate are going to reference this setup. So in BC, we're going to look for approval user setup. You can see I have a couple people set up in my uh, my test environment here already. Um, just kind of briefly going through these fields, you know, user ID, select from the drop down users that are in your system that you want to set up uh, in this approver setup. Um, and then you have some some different fields here for sales approval amounts, uh, whether it's unlimited or if there should be a dollar amount specified for that user. Um, this is saying they can approve anything up to a dollar, the dollar amount that you specify. And that's for uh, sales and purchase. And then over here, we've got the email of that user that uh, that approval requests need to be sent to. And if they're an approval administrator, you only get one approval administrator. So just set that up for whoever the user is that needs to be making the changes in this page. All right, so that's pretty much it for the approval user setup. Uh, the next place that we need to go is to the workflow page. Once you've got those approval users set up, we're gonna set up workflows. Okay, uh, these can do simple tasks in BC, um, like approval requests, which we're gonna go over today. Um, there's some, some default templates that are built in within Business Central. These are a bit more rigid. You can make edits to them. Um, but without a lot of in-depth knowledge into the different um, edits, modifications you can make, in my opinion, they're not as intuitive. Um, but I can just create a, you know, click on new workflow from, from template up at the top there. These are a list of the, the base templates that we can create workflows off of. Uh, so one I could do, we come down here would be a, a customer approval workflow. Um, so if I click OK on that, it's going to set the workflow up for me. Um, and this is basically just saying, you know, hey, what, when approval of a customer is requested, do the following, and it, it sends the approval request uh, to the appropriate approver based on who the user is that's sending that approval request. Again, these are a bit more rigid. There's some some conditions or filters that you can put in, uh, in into these uh, this middle column here, and then you can alter the responses if for some reason a base template doesn't quite. Um, the response isn't what you're looking for. You want to kind of change it a bit. You can go in and edit those responses, but again, it's it's not as intuitive to figure out. And um, in my opinion, this is a bit more rigid, but something you can do with these workflows is if for instance, you know, it's not maybe a direct approver situation, it's like an approval group. You do have the ability to set up, um, you know, we could say like a, a customer approval group and anyone that uh, you know, and your company is able to approve a new customer. Maybe you've got three or four people that that are able to approve that. You could set up a group so that everybody gets that approval request, and BC doesn't care who approves it. As soon as the first person approves it, that approval is pushed through, and the customers approve. Or if it's you know a purchase document, it could be a a purchase approvals group. So do have that that flex that flexibility in that sense uh, with these, but overall you're going to have more flexibility uh, going with a Power Automate flow. Okay. So if you're looking for that flexibility and applying rules or variety to your workflows, which we often see, uh, you have the option to use Power Automate. Like I mentioned, there's a lot of pre-built templates available, available for you to use um, as they are, or you can adjust them to meet your needs, or you can create flows entirely from scratch if you know how to do that. Uh, today, we're just going to cover a base template, and so you can see what those are like, and you can begin to kind of imagine how, we, how you would use them or how you could customize them. So I'm going to start by 
Jumping over to Power Automate. We're going to sign in there. Okay. And then we're going to go to Templates. So what I can do here, if I could spell, we're just going to type Business Central and all the different templates um, that relate to you know, integrating with, with a workflow in Business Central pop up here. Um, so you can scroll through these. There's, there's a, a pretty decent amount. Um, you can do quite a bit. And a lot of these integrate with different Microsoft services. Um, so what we're going to look for is just a basic one here. Uh, request approval for a Business Central purchase order. All right, so we're going to click on that. Now, once you click on a template, it's going to take you to this page right here where it's telling you what your connections are for Flow. So if you get this little green checkbox, that means you're authenticated with the user that you're currently signed in with. Um, so in my case, this these are the, the services or the endpoints that this flow needs to connect to. So Business Central, uh, Outlook, Office 365 users, and this uh, admin user that I'm signed, with, signed in with uh, is already authenticated automatically with each of those services. If you're doing this for the first time, the only one in this list that you may not get a, a checkbox immediately for is this approvals uh, endpoint. And if if you don't have that checkbox, there's going to be a little option here for you to set up an account or for you to sign into account if you have one. Um, if you don't have an account, this approvals one is very quick to set up. It's not, you don't have to enter hardly any information and it's it's got you set up and ready to go. In my case, I've set this up already. So I've got the green, green checkbox saying all of my connections are authenticated and good to go. All right. So for this template, the next thing that it's requiring is that we um, specify a BC environment and a company and approval request recipient. All right. So if I click the drop down here, I got a list of the different environments um, that I can connect to with my flow. In my case, I'm going to choose Sandbox 2. And then I'm going to choose my Cronus company just because I know I have some, some dummy data in there. And then approval request recipients. So this is going to be who's going to get that approval request when it's sent out. Um, in this case, it's got to be somebody who's licensed both in Exchange and at least has a team member license in BC. Because again, uh, this flow does reference that approval user setup in Business Central. Uh, in, or in order to set up a user in that approval setup, they have to at least have a team's member license uh, to be able to approve those documents. Uh, so two prerequisites there. So if I can start typing, search for a sec, it's found my user. So if if you just type in like a random email address here, um, it's not going to error on you until you actually try to run the flow. And it's going to say, hey, this person doesn't you know, actually have the, the, the necessary credentials. They're not set up. Uh, so just make sure you're choosing somebody who is, is properly licensed. So we're going to click Create. Give it a second to think. And there we go. Now I'm going to jump into edit my flow. And this is the base template that's set up. So it can it can look a little bit scary. There are a good amount of steps in here, um, but most of these are taken care of for us. You have, we have the ability to come in and edit these just a little bit in some minor ways if you want to tweak some things. Um, and we'll, we'll start going through that with this first step. So when a purchase document approval is requested. So you can see that that page that we were just in where we had the environment, the company, um, those settings that we filled in specifying uh, what those values should be, those have carried into our flow now. So our environment is uh, is booked to our sandbox too, and the company is Cronus. Um, so this is, it's good to know where in the flow you need to change this, because maybe you want to, you know, start this in a, in a sandbox or in a test company, make sure that the flow is working how you want with the approvals, everything's going to the right place. Uh, and then once once you're ready to, to switch things over to, to production, you can just come into this this tab in the flow, change your environment to production, change the company if you need to, and then resave it. That's going to be pointed at the right environment. Okay, a couple other things to be aware of. Uh, we've got some conditions that are set in here by default for us. So since we're doing a purchase document approval is requested, uh, this template's gone ahead and, and filled in some some basic some basic conditions for us, you know, the, the document type is order, uh, you know, it's not a purchase invoice, it's not a, a uh, purchase credit memo, it's a, it's a purchase order. Uh, the status is set to open, amount including that is text. So 
anything over than zero. So that in our case, that's going to be pretty much any purchase order that we're, we're submitting. Um, if you had some other conditions you want to set, maybe you want to change this dollar amount. So, hey, we're really only approving things that are above a certain dollar amount. You can do that. Uh, or maybe you have some other conditions you want to add in here. We can come down to fourth condition, click the drop down. It's going to give us a list of the different fields that we can use as a filter and you know, maybe for you, uh, you need to to set it to filter based on your dimension. We can scroll down to our shortcut dimensions here, uh, and I could I could choose that shortcut dimension, and then uh, set a condition. Just to keep things simple, you could you could kind of branch off this. You know, maybe there's one person needs to approve if it's a, if it's a one dimension value, and then if it's a different dimension value, it needs to go to a different approver. Um, if you're starting to get into to multiple steps that way, you can break this off and branch it out some more. Or just to keep it simple, you could copy this flow uh, and have one flow where it's the same parameters, but you know a, it has to be a certain shortcut dimension code. Uh, and then your, your copy of the flow that you created points at the same environment. Uh, everything is the same, except for you, know, you set a, a different condition here and the approver that you use is, is set up to be somebody else. So that's an option. Uh, the next thing that we're going to look at is down here in start and wait for approval. So if I click into that step, you can see there's some dynamic uh, fields that are put in here. This is the message that's going to get sent out. Here's the uh, approver that it's assigned to that we filled in in, in the previous page. Um, so this is it, when I request an approval, this approval user is going to get an email. This is going to be the title of that. So if you wanted to change this a bit, you know, maybe this is too clunky, you know, request approval from Microsoft Dynamics 365 Business Central. If you want to like shorten that or put in your own wording, this is where you would change that. Or in the previous example, where I was just saying, maybe you want a, a separate um, person to approve if, you know, maybe the dimension is, is a specific value. You could uh, create a copy of the flow. And then here in this assigned to value, just pick a different approver that that, that flow would run to. Okay. Um, one other thing you may want to edit is down here in this React on on the outcome. Um, so the rest of these steps are handling. You know, we've submitted the purchase uh, approval. It's been routed to the approver um, using these other steps, and then React and outcome is okay. What happens once that approver actually does something with that approval request? Maybe they approve it. Maybe they reject it. What do we want? Um, what do we want the flow to do at that point? So if we step into our approve branch here. Uh, there's a couple different options. Um, we could see, should it send an email when it's approved? So let's click into that step. Again, as you click into these things, it, it, it expands and it looks like, man, there's a lot going on. But really all we're saying is, you know, hey, on approval, uh, should you send an email, yes or no? If yes, then you can see it's going to send an email when approved. If we click into that, we can see this is the email that's that it's going to be sent. It's to the person who requested that approval request. And then we've just got a subject and then some HTML tags along with some dynamic content. This can look a bit scary. Um, if you're not really comfortable setting up you know, uh, HTML email messages, we can certainly help with that if you wanna reach out to us. Or if, uh, if you just wanted to change this message entirely, put your own dynamic fields in here. Um, you, know, you can see if I click in here, I get a, a little option here for dy dynamic content. Scroll down here, the, the fields just by default that are available for me to put in there. Um, so if you wanted to just completely rewrite this message, you could do that. If you wanted to change the subject a little bit, um, we could do that. You know, let's say I just want to put, you know, no, uh, not do it now. I guess this one's already been approved. So say good to go. Just add a little message there. And again, we could do that same thing over in the reject branch. Check branch has, let me see if I can scroll over here. Check branch has the same option for sending an email. And if we click on this, uh, there's a, it's looks fairly, fairly similar, uh, except for, you know, the, the verbiage used is that, Hey, this is, this is actually rejected. Um, no good. Right. So once you've made the necessary edits that you want to make to your flow, we can just come up and click save. That's going to save our flow. 
Okay, so once our, our flow has finished saving, we get this green checkbox that our flow is ready to go. Um, if for whatever reason, you know, we filled something out incorrectly here, it'll let us know as we try to save it and uh, point, us, point us at what needs to be fixed. Um, so what I'm gonna do at this point is pull over BC again. And uh, instead of being signed in as the administrative user, uh, we're actually signed in now as our, uh, our person who's gonna be submitting the approval. And then we're gonna jump into purchase orders. And we'll use this uh, 004, for example. Okay, so we got a purchase order here where the status is open, uh, dollar amount above zero. So we're gonna be able to submit this for approval. So as this user, I'm gonna come up to request approval and send approval request. And now you can see the status has changed to pending approval. And we should be getting an email pretty shortly here uh, to our approval user to approve the request. And there we go, we got our approval approval request just came through. You can see it's got that uh, big long description we, that I mentioned you could change if you want. Approval requested, it's got who, uh, who it's created by, who the requesting user is. It's got a link to the purchase order if we need to go look at it. The beauty of this flow is that we actually don't need to navigate to Business Central. Even though our approval user needs to be licensed there, uh, we don't actually have to navigate to the purchase order to approve it. We can do that if we want. We could definitely approve it uh, from Business Central, but we have the option here, you know, if you, if you put the information that needs to be in here for the approver, you know, who it's for, what the total is, any other relevant information, uh, then they can just you know, make the decision to approve or reject straight from here. So we're going to go ahead and approve this. We can enter a comment if we want. Looks good. And then we're going to submit that for approval. You see this changes to approved. And now jumping back over to the email for our uh, approver, a uh, person sending the approval, uh, we get a nice little email here that says approval requested by Alan Schneider. For this purchase order, this dollar amount uh, was approved. Good to go. There's our little message that we put right at the end, um, and we can open it in Business Central again. Or just it gives us, uh, you know, who approved it, what the response was, and uh, any comments that that uh, that approver put in there. All right. So if we jump back into Business Central now, go look at our purchase orders. We can see that our 004 purchase order. Now went from a status of uh, pending approval to released, and we should be good to post it. So that's everything. Your approval is now set up, tested, and ready to use. Uh, we'd suggest setting up a flow first in a sandbox. Once it's good to go, you can change to a production environment in the flow. It may go without saying, but finding places in your work processes to automate manual and repetitive work, whether it's just a few steps or an entire process, will save you and your team tons of time and energy in the long run. And as you can see, it's not all that hard to get started. As we mentioned before, there's a handful of workflows right within BC that you may find use of. Uh, but if you're looking for something more customized with your own rules and conditions, we suggest starting with Power Automate templates. Uh, they can be used as is or altered to fit your needs better. And if Microsoft's focus on building, it's Microsoft's focus uh, on building more and better templates in Power Automate. Uh, so you're gonna get more value from focusing your attention there instead of with some of those built-in uh, BC workflows. Keep in mind too, that whether you're using BC workflows or Power, Power Automate workflows, you're welcome to set them up yourself or lean on us to set them up for you. We're happy to help. Um, that's it for today's class. We hope to see you next week, same time, same place. Thanks for joining us and have a good day.